Yo, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to the official Cards at Home YouTube channel. And in today's video, we are going to be covering over the basics and how to play my homemade indie trading card game, Resolution Breakers, the updated edition. Now, I'm actually going to be breaking this down into two separate videos. Today's part is going to cover the general rules, identifying slash reading cards, and also taking a very first look into how a standard play mat looks in Resolution Breakers. And part two, we'll be going through game steps and learning the flow of the game. So be sure to look out for that video soon. So without further ado, let's learn the general rules of Resolution Breakers. Resolution Breakers is a trading card game in which two players battle it out with an arrayed assortment of cards at their disposal. Sounds simple enough, right? Cool. Now let's take a closer look. So first up we have the aim of the game, how to win slash lose. In order to win a standard game of Resolution Breakers, a player will need to deal 5 damage directly to their opponent. If a player cannot draw during their turn's draw step, they immediately lose. As I stated earlier, we'll cover the game steps more in part 2. There are no possibilities for a game to end in a draw, nor are there any special conditions to win. Card slash deck conditions. Now there are very little restrictions to follow in Resolution Breakers, which are, you can only have up to 4 copies of a card with the same name within your deck at any given time. Note this also counts for alternate art cards, that meaning if you have for example this card here Lord of Unrelenting Flame Shingen in your deck, you can only have a maximum of up to 4 Lord of Unrelenting Flame Shingens in your deck. Even if you manage to stumble across a card with a different art but it's still called Lord of Unrelenting Flame Shingen, but you could only have up to 4 between the two. But if that card was to say for example called Lord of Not So Unrelenting Flame Shingen, you can then have up to 4 copies of each. A player's deck must contain exactly 50 cards, no more and no less, and that's it. Other than that you can style and build your deck to your liking as long as it fits those conditions. So we've talked about cards already but now let's actually take a look at the cards in the game with identifying cards in the game. There are three different cards in Resolution Breakers, unit cards, support cards and action cards. And with each there are a few different types so let's take a look at each one. Unit types. Unit cards are what you use to battle your opponent with and also defend yourself and in a sense they are essentially vital for you to win the game. There are two different types of units, your regular unit cards and support. Though both of them can be used as regular units so just bear that in mind. Support cards just have a special unique effect that when the card is charged they'll give your units already in play an additional buff and boost and we'll cover over what charging itself is a bit later on in the video. Support types. Support cards are very similar to your regular units aside from the aforementioned special unique effect. You'll notice this symbol on the card here in order to recognize what cards are support cards and not. There are four kinds of support cards. Hit, Life, Refresh, and draw. Hit is represented by the red symbol, life is green, refresh is blue and draw is yellow. They are all rather self-explanatory but it will flash up on the screen what each of them do though it will make a bit more sense once we start taking a closer look at the cards themselves. Action types. There are three different action card types, normal, quick and permanent. Normal actions are cards that can only be played during your own turn's main step and is discarded once the effect resolves. Quick actions are cards that you can play during either player's turn within the card's requirements and also like normal actions they are discarded once their effect resolves. Permanent actions kind of speak for themselves, they can only be used during your turn's main step but once used they stay active in your action zone. You'll find an assortment of action cards with different effects to help a player throughout the game or cause problems for your opponent. Now, from first glance you can notice each card type has a bunch of things going on with the card, which for some can be a bit intimidating to take it all in and understand, but let's take an even closer look at each and break each of them down piece by piece. So moving on to reading a card. Unit cards. So starting from top to bottom, here we have the unit's hit. This is the amount of damage the card deals either to another unit in play or to a player. Note this is represented by the amount of red diamond shapes, the more diamonds the more damage the unit deals. Life, this is the amount of damage the card can receive while it's in play before being sent to the discard pile. Note, just like with a unit's hit, this is represented by the amount of green crystals. The card's image, this is just what the card looks like. The type, this is represented by the colour of the half border that you can see on the card itself. There are 6 types in total in Resolution Breakers. Blaze, Nature, Shadow, Hope, Lightning and Tidal. Law, this is just flavour text mostly for decorative purposes. The card's name, this is what the card is called. The effect, what the card itself actually does, note there are some units with no effects at all and some units that have multiple effects compared to the others. Race, this is the unit card's race. Power, how much strength the unit has in order to battle other units. Faction, this is what faction or team the card belongs to. Most decks work best with their faction's playstyles. Set slash rarity value, 
This is just showing the set from where the card can be found, plus how rare the card is. Rarity is represented by the coloured circle next to the code. Common is white, rare is yellow, super rare is blue, ultra rare is red, and break rare is black. And then on the opposite side, lastly, is illustrator credit. This is just showing the creator of the card's image. Support cards. Now, support cards are pretty much exactly the same layout as a regular unit card because they are also considered unit cards. All except the support symbol that I mentioned earlier that you can find beneath the cards here. Action cards. Now, action cards have a lot less going on than unit cards, but the layout is pretty much the same. But starting from top to bottom once again, in the top left is the actions type, which is just showing you what the type of action the card is, either normal, quick, or permanent. Image, again, this is just what the card looks like. Lore, flavor text once again for decorational purpose. The card's name, what the card is called. Effect, what the action card does. Set slash rarity value, again, it's just the set you'd find the card along with how rare the card is. And then finally, illustrated credit again. The creator of the card's image. So we've learned about cards so let's move on to looking at the layout of a standard playmat for resolution breakers. Just like the cards there's an assortment of zones in which the cards reside in that you'll need to familiarize yourself with before playing. And just like with the cards themselves we'll dive in and break down each zone one by one and explain which one does and what it's about. So card zones and the field. Going from right to left this time here we have the deck zone. This is where players place their deck face down at the beginning of each game before shuffling their deck. A player must always cut the opposing player's deck if and when it has been shuffled, but always remember to be respectful of other players' cards. Unit area. Here is where you deploy your units on either side of your leader. You can have a maximum of up to four units in your unit area at a time. Though if your unit area is currently filled up, you can send a unit in play to your discard pile in order to deploy another unit from your hand. Leader zone. This is your final and also your first form of defense. Any unit can be frontal deployed into your leader zone, of course unless they have an effect that prohibits them from doing so. If you have no unit in your leader zone, you are then open to a direct attack from your opponent and viable for taking damage. Note, some cards are better suited for being in the leader zone as there are unique effects that only work whilst they are in the leader zone and they gain additional stats while they're in there too. Discard pile, found beneath the deck where cards are placed face up, either used such as action cards or units once they have been defeated in battle, set there by a card effect or replaced in order to deploy another unit into your unit area. You can look through your discard power at any time throughout the game, but you cannot rearrange the card's order. Action Zone This is where you use your action cards. You will notice that you have only 4 zones as any permanent action cards you use stay in your action zone as active, so make sure to not use too many at once. Reserve Power on the opposite side of your discard pile, where cards are placed face up either at the very start of the game, which we'll cover over more in part 2, through charging or through a card's effect. This zone is also utilised with direct attacks and with card effect costs. You can check through your reserve pile anytime, but you cannot check through your opponents. Hand. This isn't necessarily a zone, but some cards throughout the game will have effects that are direct at a player's hand. These are the cards you are carrying from drawing and searching cards throughout the game. So that's the cards and the zones in the game. Now for the final part of this video, I just want to cover over a bunch of game slash card terms that you'd need to get yourself used to before playing Resolution Breakers. Charge. This refers to adding a card or a card itself being added to your reserve pile. Discharge. This means sending cards from your reserve pile to your discard pile, which is mostly found in cost requirements. Cost. This is a required condition to use a card's certain effect, which will be written next to cost itself on the actual cards, showing you what you need to do in order to first use an effect. Discard. This is the act of sending a card from a player's hand to the discard pile. Mill. Sending cards from the top of the deck to the discard pile. Deplete. A unit that's in play being immediately sent to the discard pile, regardless of their current life. Search. The act of looking through your deck. You must always shuffle your deck anytime you look through it. Now the next lot are a bunch of icons that you'll need to understand that you'll find on cards within Resolution Breakers. Such as this one here, this icon refers to a unit's power. This icon refers to a unit's hit. This icon refers to a unit's life. This icon refers to a refresh unit or the act of refreshing a unit in play. This icon refers to a rested unit. Now that should say or the act of resting the unit in play. This icon refers to a certain damage requirement that must first be met before the usage of an effect, I must have been high or something while typing this, which is also referred to as resolve. 
and that's everything for part 1 of the general rules and basic understanding of resolution breakers. As stated in the beginning of this video, I'll be back real soon with a part 2 where we'll go through the game steps, so be sure to look out for that. Thank you all very much for watching, I hope this was easy to follow, if you've got any questions you're unsure of be sure to leave them down below, and I'll see you all in the next video, until then, peace.